You're now tapped into the coolest reptile podcast in the world. Welcome to Reptile Community Fridays. I'm your boy, MJ. And with me, I have my man, Darian. Darian, obviously, uh, you're obviously no stranger to current events. Probably the biggest case of reptile keeping neglect ever to be exposed. Open to any, you know, comments, uh, you know, questions in the comments on here. I think that'll be good. I feel like anybody who's seen all the, uh, the photos, I mean, I was speed on it, you know, weeks ago. And, and before that, I was already, you know, looking, looking through things. And, uh, you know, as I, as I said, from the beginning, when I bought Morph Market, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in and really crack down on things. And I, I've done that quite a bit so far. I mean, I think we've probably, you know, removed a dozen, dozen or so sellers and, uh, more than that on, you know, buyers as well. On Morph Market, we have 5,000 sellers and there's only a dozen or two dozen that have really had a significant amount of issues. Unfortunately, the one to 2% that do tend to be pretty big. You know, they, they sell a lot of animals. So they make up more like eight to 10% of the actual number of animals being sold out there. It's a big problem. And I feel that a lot of it has to do with, you know, obviously the money side of things and people get greedy and they, you know, kind of lose the passion for, for animals. And it's like, it's history, enough history to where if you were in this position now, back then, Darian, same age, same everything, I think you would still do the same thing. I just think we haven't had this, the, the person with the fucking balls. I haven't had that person to stand against all the other old heads or people who are saying, don't make a big deal of this because we're all going to look bad. Well, no, it's because you don't want to eventually get looked bad. I think that's what it is. They don't really want to uh, deal with the drama related to it, you know, because when you come out and you, you make a huge claim and you come out with something, everybody goes mad and it turns into a complete shit show. Nobody wants that. You know, you've got these guys that are, making millions of dollars, vacations and whatever else. And they're kind of just relaxing at this point. And they're like, why would I go in? I don't need to say anything like they're bit. It's just business as usual. You know, they're just going to keep going. It doesn't matter. People just don't want nothing to be associated when it comes to drama. But when it has to do with something you really love and work with, right? It's been a long time since I've singled out nerd and I have nothing against Kevin McCurley. God bless all the legendary stuff that he's done for this hobby. But it still does something to me when I have a close friend of mine come to me and say, man, you should listen to you, MJ, that $1,300 fucking United States Captain Born and Bred Emerald that I bought from Nerd puked on me, and they sent me two other ones that puked on me, and I'm like, son of a bitch! What the fuck? Why are we letting We're just discounting it because it's drama? You know, oh, they're like, yeah. oh, we don't need more drama in the industry, and I'm like, you know what? You know, that's exactly what we need. Nobody's really working with what they truly love. Nobody out there. I mean, there is people. Don't get me wrong, but the the percentage of people who are passionately working with something that they just yeah. are obsessing over, that's not the case right now, and that's why they're hurting. It's not yeah. good right now, but it's about the money, Darian. It's all it is. Everyone's pissed off because they're not making money. They're not making sales. Yep. So let's expose, 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 expose. Somebody's miserable and they see someone else miserable. Boy, does it make their life easier. You know, and some of it, yeah, there's an agenda behind some stuff in this industry. And I, I've seen that firsthand, you know, like somebody doesn't like somebody for whatever reason, because their husbandry is different than their, you know, whatever it is. But the Sam, this Samson situation is, is definitely different than that. You know, it's right. It's, it's clear again. This goes back to people not really giving a fuck because nothing was exposed and they could go ahead and sell their snakes. Everything was fine with Samson when, when it wasn't out in the light, right? But now yeah. shit's out in the light. And like I said, those people who, who, who chose to be quiet or chose to stay away from the drama because ah, I don't want to be associated, even though it has to do with you because that's what you work with. If you're a mainland retic keeper Holy shit, why wouldn't you want to step up to the plate and be like, yo, this guy is not us. I do have somebody I want to say who's going to join in with us, Junior, JMG from JMG Reptiles. What's up, Junior? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, retics, you know, they're, you know, definitely a massive python species that produces a lot of eggs. And, uh, you know, I was, um, you know, reading comments about this situation. And there was like, so like, I don't know if it's like true, but somebody is saying that he has close to like 400 adult females yeah. and like, almost like 200 adult males. I'm like, man, that's like an insanely massive collection for a species of snake that size. And how many babies are you producing? And how many of these are going to homes that can actually have the capacity to raise, you know, a species such as a retic? Most employees they've ever had with claiming 2,000 retics. They, they said 2,000 retics, six people. Like 320 or something per that's person. Nuts, bro. And, and we're talking 
We're talking mainlands, man. The photos are really heartbreaking. Um, and the one thing I was like, Darian, I've never actually formally met you or talked to you, so it's nice yeah. to meet you. Really enjoy Morph Market. One thing that was like crazy about these photos is like looking at them, I could kind of tell like the kind of neglect I think that what was going on or the form of it. Actually, unfortunately, part of the ball python community, when there's somebody that has a massive amount of ball pythons that they have to unload, uh, offload and they're lower end ones, and they're not being fed a lot. And if they're not being fed a lot, the next meal you give them, their body starts to atrophy a bit and you, their stomachs become more sensitive. You can't give them a large meal. I had 12 mainlands at one point and I saw how much stress that was. But honestly, what really broke my heart was like, I had certain snakes that like to push. What do I need to do to get this pushing to stop? Feed the shit out of them to, to where they don't want to move when I'm like, that sucks. Or I just got to get them something double the size at least. Okay, this snake is now 10 foot feet and I have it in an eight foot enclosure. It's still pushing. This is a fucking problem. I don't have a 16 foot enclosure. But that's what these things need. So that's why those things are getting all those inflamed jaws and all that. That's from the pushing, huh? Let's just say this shit hit a Netflix documentary somehow. Let's just say somehow this, yeah. this shit got to Netflix. The most average individual who sees this shit is going to think we're all like this. Like there's, there's a Samson in every corner. There's a Samson in every fucking thing that we do on this life. There's a Samson. Okay. How do we, how do we delegate this? How, how do we work on this? And, and Darian, I know you're saying that what you're hoping that happens is that by you doing what no one else has done yet, as far as pushing this guy out to the point where he's banned, th this actually gives a message to the older heads like him, like anyone who has a bit of a Samson bit of a tendency or a bad habit of a Samson in their bone will see this as an example. That's, that's kind of the way that we need to do things moving forward is if you see something wrong, you speak up about it. That's it. It's that simple. If everybody's talking about this, then, you know, it goes away. And if you hit them where it hurts, which is financially, you know, livelihood, and that's, you know, morph market. If a third of, you know, half of Samson's sales were through morph market, and now all of a sudden he's kicked off. And then we say, Hey, you know, we go as far as, Hey, we're going to ban anybody who even continues to deal with him. If you are caught selling his snakes, anything like that, you're gone as well. Any expo we, you know, we have our events and expo section on morph market, Any expo that continues to allow him, uh, they're going to be ousted by me. I'll, I'll do it. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Message. I'll make a public post about it and I'll spend thousands of dollars to make sure that everybody sees that post and that they're still allowing him at their shows. Your respect. Fuck the people. You want to know who's going to like that the most? The animals. That's who the fuck are. Because yeah. that's what yeah. we're doing. We're, 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 we're not trying to build a fan base here. Us reptile keepers who fucking break our backs. Obviously had my fair share of going to shows but not bending i stress i'm not even a bender and i stress just watching you guys bend how, how do you really feel about this junior um you've been in this game long enough to where you know that there's been these type of examples yes. of people who've been I've seen some bad stuff some I've really some bad, bad stuff, stuff over the years so are, are you in a place where you're like hey we should fucking speak up okay yeah i think people should speak up i mean there's there's here's the thing that's everything's like on a spectrum and this is like i'm not talking about samson when i'm bringing up this first part but this first part is like let's say somebody's like gets overwhelmed they shouldn't um be afraid to reach out to somebody to ask for help or you know something like that then you got levels of like this dude that guy's been you know doing bad stuff for years actually i heard about him for the first time about two years ago dave and dave kind of heard some stuff and he was telling me a little bit about it that he was hearing was this dude was about to go under like you know uh employees ex-employees were reporting him to PETA. um they were he even said it, like it's pretty much done this guy's like going to be gone in like six months and then, you know, I didn't hear really anything. And then, you know, it just kind of went out of my mind. I didn't even think about it because, like, you know, I was just, this is like this one time it came up in discussion. And that was roughly about two years ago. Now this is resurfacing. And I realized I was like, this guy's still doing this stuff. Fuck this guy. When I found out the shit that you talked, the stuff that you found out a couple years ago, I found out too. And it all started with the dogs. And that's what, when I heard about dogs, I was like, oh, no, no. Like, who the hell is this guy, right? The shell shocker was he i saw him do an interview with brian cusco I sat down with this guy three years ago okay three years ago and I, I couldn't hear him talk that much but he was accused of the worst shit three years ago we just didn't have all this documentation we didn't there were some some pictures floating around some pictures, yeah but this this inside inside job thank god the, the you know somebody with a heart happened to walk in this facility and say this is not right and dude Talk about the PTSD that that poor girl or guy, whoever the fuck has been there, probably has, man. I'm talking about a smell. I've dealt with regurgitation before because I've had a lot of emeralds, imported stuff. And let me tell you, one regurgitation, 
rocks yes. the whole room. It rocks the whole room, dude. 500, 700 reptile expos a year in the US. 20, 25,000 people every year who are buying an animal from an expo that doesn't make it. And then they go tell other people like, oh yeah, I bought a gecko, but it died a week later. Or, you know, I bought a Savannah monitor and it was dead a few days later. You know, that stuff looks bad for everybody. It's not a good look. It doesn't benefit anything. It doesn't benefit the animal. It doesn't benefit people. It just does a disservice to the whole industry. It makes us all look bad. People first getting into the hobby, getting into just owning an animal, they're going to go for the, you know, the Savannah monitor that's $30 or the Chinese water, water dragon that's 29, you know, 20 bucks. I think that some people don't evolve or try to make better standards for themselves because they don't feel like the eyes aren't on them. And I feel like when people have eyes on them, they feel like they automatically need to like step the bar up. And obviously, Junior, like you're very like you do you you uh you market yourself very well. You're you know you're very you're out there. You show people your room and stuff like that. And you have so many other people who just keep this shit for themselves and don't want eyes on them. And 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 that's why. And let me tell you one thing. You know, and I won't expose ever who this is because I no matter what it is, I, I would always love them. But the very first collection I ever went to go visit was a collection I was so excited to go see. But that's when I figured out the water, like the whole, like, what do you mean you only do water changes once a week? That was a place where oh, I was, okay. were, they were opening up tubs, showing me things. And we were looking at some, I don't want, I don't want to give too much info. But we were looking at some things and I was like, dude, there's, you just showed me four fucking tubs that had shit in the water bowl. Why do you keep going? And he's like, <laughs> oh, he's like, he's like, oh, Wednesdays are water changes. And mind you, it's like Saturday. I'm like, yes. what? And I'm like, and I'm like, and I'm like, I, I look, I'm like, what do we have to do right now? I was like, is this all we're doing? I was like, dude, I'm just gonna do these water changes for you. I'm like, and I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, am I out of line? Because you look up to these people technically and yeah. you're happy to be here, but why is this happening? Yeah, but even if you do, it's like I have like so many hog nose and like I just fed these and after they eat. They drink a lot. So my favorite thing is to get them food, and then I wait about 24 hours, and then I get them all fresh water. Sometimes I'll even do electrolyte water then. But I'll have females. They'll just be sitting there, and they have a big full bowl of fresh water that's been sitting there, and I'll put their face in it, and they'll start chugging. And they'll drink for like a good 30, 40 seconds. I'm like, well, you had this water here. Why aren't you drinking it? You know, nice, the hog nose, luckily, they don't have to drink like constantly because they are they are a prairie species, so they're not like, you know, needing like fresh water, like, you know, every, every single day. But, you know, we make sure that they always have ample fresh water for the times they do need it and everything. And then like, you know, I use actually smaller water dishes. So after about three, four days, that thing is mostly empty and then it's ready for a new one. Cause I don't want old stagnant water in there because having to replace thousands of water bowls that have stagnant water um, and that stagnant water starts to grow bacteria. And then morph market, uh, morph market, definitely with spent in Facebook too. I'd say more morph market. I've seen people that I know about from about 15 years ago, 18 years ago, that had horrible reputations. Mm -hmm. And now in our morph market, they're acting a lot better because mm -hmm. there's reviews and there's a spot on them. So I'll give you some good examples of that. We have some sellers on there, pretty much a five-star rating on morph market. You know, elsewhere, they have really poor reviews. And it's because morph market is what everybody goes to. That's where they go to see like, oh, what is this person rated? You know, what kind of reviews do they have? You got some of these sellers who, you know, they take care of anything. Like animal shows up dead and they're on it and they're replying and they're like, you know, we'll take care of that, no problem. And they just do whatever they need to do to get the good review. Uh, but also, I will be the first to tell you that the reviews on Morph Market are not entirely accurate. Uh, they're decent, but on some of the bigger breeders, don't look at Morph Market for reviews. It's bullshit. Tell you that completely honest with you. That's it's complete bullshit um, because nobody is willing to go and give them a bad review. If you go on Morph Market and you give, you know one of the biggest guys in the industry, a bad review, you're fucked. Like nobody's doing it. I get messages daily. People are like, Hey, I had this happen from this guy. They sent me uh, an animal that, I mean, look at the pictures of it. This is what the animal was on morph market. And this is what I received or, you know, it was covered in mites or whatever, but I can't go on there and write a bad review because it's public and they'll know who did it. A lot of the reviews are decent on Morph Market. Like if you look at the reviews on Morph Market, most people have like a five star. It's pretty political.
It's just not accurate because people do not do it. But on the back end of things, people actually message Morph Market and they say, oh, I, you know, didn't write a review, but here's, you know, a problem that I had. And they, and they'll give us kind of a report. And so we add that stuff in the back end. Like we have records of everything. Um, and that's great because we can file all of that and we can have, you know, I can go back to a seller and I could be like, Hey, what happened in 2019, 2020, 2021? And I can see every bad email we've received. We log everything. And it's awesome because we're able to see all that, but the public still can't. So there's definitely um, there's definitely some issues there. And I think that it, it all comes back to this Samson thing where people are worried about what others are going to think. And they're worried that, oh, I'm a new person in this industry. And if I go and give, you know, whoever uh, a one star review, I'm done. Like I'll never have a chance of, you know, getting into breeding. So yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure that out right now, but I think that, you know, there's just too much of, of that, you know, like the good old boys club going on. Go look at a couple of the biggest sellers out there and they have hundreds of reviews, all five stars. You can go look them up and you see bad reviews everywhere, but it's because a lot of people are scared to review them. People look at reptile people like a bunch of weirdos. I mean, uh, yeah. We are, you know, can you, we're all can you blame them though? Can you blame them? Look at the Slytherin files, put any pressure on you, Darian, but it definitely starts at the top. And what I mean by that is what you've already kind of did your part so far and, and laid it like you laid it out there. Like, listen, any kind of neglect, any kind of bullshit behind you and an animal, it's not going to be accepted on morph market. Well, then guess what just finally happened this year. Now they're actually physically saying we are not allowing this person at this show anymore. And that wasn't the case before, because I got to tell you, I heard this stuff about this gentleman, and then I saw him at a show, all set up, all his snakes, everything. And I'm like, what? If this doesn't work, then I don't know what will. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm pushing this stuff out to, you know, tens of thousands of people. I mean, our Facebook post about all this, um, you know, it's reached like 35, 40,000 people already in two days. And same goes for expos. You know, I am not going to promote any expo that is going to allow him to continue to vent give up his stuff and start over, you know, do something else, go get into something else. that's not animals. If you could just go to bed, if, if you know, Oh shit, I smell regurg in this room. Well, I'll take care of it tomorrow morning. You, you just don't, that doesn't work. Like it's, and, and what's crazy is, and I'm sure you guys will admit some of the biggest shit pops off when you're so tired and ready to call tonight and you can't, you got to fucking dude, pony up. You got to fucking take care of it because if not, you're just going to be okay with just letting it go and you're going to do it again and you're going to do it again. Yeah. And next thing you know, things are dying. And, 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 but this is like a bad, like this case is like, this is so like, this guy gave up so long ago. It's ridiculous. I, I, want, I don't want to bring this into it, but the fact that his spouse or his girlfriend, should she be dragged under this as well? You think? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I'm not going to allow that. How could you ban everybody? Like you're going to ban anybody that has one of his snakes snakes, and you bought one or, you know, unknowingly who cares. But if you are, defending him or continuing to buy from him and you know promoting him in any way like see you later i don't want that i mean i understand it firsthand you know banning several people you know <laughs> over the last couple months you know i get on there and i'm like well this is gonna be you know uncomfortable and awkward and you know like hey we have to suspend you or ban you because of you know issues that we've experienced you know have found out about and, you know, it's, it's the same with expos, you know, like they have to go to these people and be like, Hey, you know, you've got a, uh, you know, a little screen enclosure with 40 wild caught Jackson's chameleons in it all crawling over each other. And, you know, and Tegu's in a 20, you know, a dozen, you know, sub adult Tegu's in a, you know, 20 or 40 gallon enclosure all piled on top of each other. Like, you know, you can't do our show anymore. There's up drama and other people get mad about it who are friends with them and then their buddies start attacking the show. And then they're like, oh, I'm canceling this. I'm going to this show over here. And, you know, it's, it's something that, uh, you know, it's just part of business. It's something you have to do. It's yeah. a touchy, 
Like, holy I shit. I was thinking about inviting Samson on. I was going to just send him a message on Facebook and be like, dude, let's talk. Let's, I you know, uh, I wouldn't be able to be, I wouldn't be able to, like, I would, I would, I would break, I would break character. I would fucking lose it because I just, all, all I would be able to see is the innocent people in my head. That's it. And, and I would just see red. And that's why I don't, and I don't want it to be that kind of show. I'm trying to make progress here. And, and, um, Man, maybe you should bring them on live on Morph Market because uh, you could probably keep your shit together. I couldn't. There's no way. I would just, I would give the people who hate me what they want. MJ losing his mind, and there it is. He, he's a bully, and then next thing you know, they're making shirts saying, we stand with Samson, okay? So that's <laughs> – And the fact that people are backing it up. I mean, people are defending him and saying, oh, I, I know you. I know who you are. I, you know, I, I've met you. I, you know, you, you helped me with this animal and whatever else. Well, I've watched some – true crime series where you know there's some great you know husband and father and whatever and you know goes and and kills his whole family and everybody's like oh you know he was the greatest guy you know I, he was amazing like you can't you can't just uh you know look past things like this just because you've met the person and you think that they're great you know like it's when when the stuff happens you have to face it like okay this is this is fucked. Whatever, man. I had to boot someone who was earlier in the chats because, you know, you want to talk about when shit catches up to you. Like this person ended up doing something to a pet keeper where she wasn't going to fucking she wasn't going to let it go. And the thing is, so many people have taken advantage of other people in this industry, whether if they're just buying a snake or doing a sell where a lot of people don't want to take it there. They just like, yeah. I got fucked. And that's what it is. Junior, you know it comes with the territory. You come into this game, yeah. you're fucked, right? Right, so, yeah. I get screwed and, over sometimes. It's actually surprising. Like, I'm surprised by some of the people that I know that, like, like you're, I don't know them personally, but I've just seen them around. And then you hear stories of people getting, like, you know, screwed over by not getting the right animals, getting stuff that's Photoshopped, and not only happening once, but it just keeps happening and happening and happening, and, like, dozens of stories. And they have, like, no bad ratings. I don't know what the – but I think – um the one thing a lot of these people do is like they, um, you know, try to scare them into like, hey, if you go public with this, I'm not going to try to help you out or replace the animal. I think a lot of them are like the probably the more like the flippers and retail shops, uh, especially some of the ones in Florida where they're getting thousands of animals and are turning and burning them. And yeah, if you look at their Google reviews, there's hundreds and hundreds of horrible reviews. And you go on a morph market, there's like two bad ratings and like and they're like, you know, and then there's like. 90 good ones i'm like how does this person have this many good ratings i was like i know so many people and then i have people actually come into me and inboxing me about that person and i've had like maybe like 10 separate individual yeah. people in the past year saying hey can you help me with this hog nose this hog nose is sick it came in like this i got it from so and so and you know these people are always good bullshitters you know well most of it sees throughable just like the samson stuff i mean obviously you know he's going to try to spin it off um bob vu i watched his live with it after he posted it and it was like you know very spot on you know you can so you could see right through the bullshit and you know samson sounded like he did the best what he could with like admitting to it by trying to make it not sound as bad as possible and then trying to protect the other people and that was like about as best as he could get but still nobody's completely buying it they know that there's layers of facade plus we, we already know this guy he has been doing this for for years. We've come to find out, and also that he's you know has passed um, you know felonies with abusing dogs and stuff. So this is not a friend of animals. No, 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 no. He says he's never he was never convicted. Oh, he's, he's never not convicted. convicted. Yeah, you, you know why? Because I I had my attorneys look into it. It was expunged. Oh, you had your attorneys look into it? Oh yeah, I've, oh, I've, I've been 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 cool man. Awesome, Darian. <laughs> I, I put I put like ten grand into this shit. And, and not just with Samson, with others too. What are your message though, Junior? Anyone out there who's kind of new to this and they're just shell-shocked and they're like, what the fuck's going on? This is like the worst of the worst. And these people, you know, they're not going to try to expose themselves and they're trying to keep it hidden. This guy kept it hidden very well for this. And I've heard of like other stuff, like, you know, like Dead Morris is at his place too, like two years ago when I first heard it pop up that, you know, and then somebody had a picture of a dead lynx. So anyhow, like, yeah, th th this isn't the face of the reptile hobby this is just the really ugly part and this is the part where you know hopefully we get more and more people speaking out against this stuff so stuff like this doesn't happen um, i'm not a fan of the mass importation of ball pythons um the 40 50 000 are imported to the us the united states every year if they just stop that like now i'm not against imports if they just like let's say they imported just like a few thousand every year and they're looking for morphs specifically and that's it 
It's like there's enough production in the United States. It would actually benefit the ball python market. So I think what Darian's doing with the Wacott stuff, um, you know, I think it's like, you know, he's getting roughed up because he's coming out there with new ideas. But, you know, I, I think the things will fall into place. And, um, you know, again, I think anybody should be against any mass importation of a species that's established in captivity against most mass importations. Like if you need like thousands and thousands of animals, it's like this is just merely for buying and reselling and more Not profit. Right. And, you yeah. know, it's getting them yeah. out to the hobbyist to a degree. And that's kind of like how this stuff kind of started. Um, but, you know, it, it, from the late 90s to now, things have changed a lot. Um, you know, there was a lot more wild caught, a lot more flipping, a lot more bad husbandry and practices. There's probably more of the Samsons back then than there are now. So, you know, there is a more of a push for captive born uh, animals, but you know, they, the new people don't know about that. Things like this that happen where it's like, Hey, you know, this animal literally relies on you. And if you have too many animals as what Samson was saying, you know, if you have too many animals, whether for pets or for breeding or whatever, and you can't handle it, have less animals, get rid of some. Cause if you can't handle it, there are way too many people hoard. And we've got these hoarders that just buy and buy and buy. And, you know, Samson, like with, you know, buying like hundreds of tegus, I think it was like a hundred and something tegus, putting them in a bus, like yeah. he put them in a bus in the winter to, you know, and like didn't insulate it or something. And so they got too cold. Have like a building or something proper to put these things in. Like, don't buy them. Don't go spend thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 on fucking tegus and put them in a fucking bus. What the fuck is that? Like, that's just shit. Like, that's bullshit. Biggest cringy thing about that Cusco interview we had is how, how like, smooth of a talker he almost was like he like he kept just talking like oh, dancing around like the real question i guess and the guy just talks he just likes to talk you know but won't ever yeah. fucking get down to the truth of the matter um i think the best thing you can do is disappear man to be honest I, you want to do us all a favor get the fuck out of here you guys watch tiger king right you guys know yeah. doc antle from tiger yeah, king? I, yeah. I mean he, he's kind of like doc antle but not even close like doc antle was at least presentable enough for reality tv he looks like doc guy. antle if he was dunked in it, grease like, like he, I, I, doc looked like he at least took bass you know what i mean hey listen uh junior again before i let you go I, i'm gonna start a trend i'm gonna post a video i'm gonna tag you in it because i'm gonna call out a couple people and this trend is uh, flex your room. I'm going to do a video just showing off your room. I think people out there should be so proud about what they keep. They should have no problem showing off their rooms. And I also think that's a good way to kind of judge somebody. Like you got somebody who sells a lot of snakes, but they never show off their room. Tell them to show off their room. Like what does your room look like? You know what I mean? Yeah. No, and, that's a good idea. That's why yeah. I, like, I, like, I like my room. I like the snakes to be on clean ships. I like everything to... You know, smell good in here. Um, right. you know, proud I'm proud of it. Big fan of art. I want my place to look good in all right. aspects. You're proud um, of it. Hard, that's hard yeah, work. I, like, I want to be in here, so I want it to look like really good when I'm in here. I spend most of my time in here, and actually, you know, uh, I think you know this. My living area is connected to my building because I tell a bunch. Of, I, <laughs> I think you'd be a psychopath to breed hognose snakes and then to have them in a separate building and you have to walk to your place. I check these things all the time. When they're laying yeah. eggs, I'm getting up at three or 4 a.m. I'm yeah. from Ohio. It's like, <laughs> it's like told eight months out of the year, basically. I'm, I want to be in here all the time. My trap's connected to my kitchen, bro. I fucking, psh, nice. I walk in here butt naked. I love it. Ain't no, nice. You can't tell me what to do. Guys, if you thought JMG did a good job tonight, get the likes up. Hit the like button for Junior right now. But that's a wrap. Junior, have a good night, man. Appreciate you. Yeah. Oh, thanks, MJ. Thanks, Darian, too. Uh, see you guys. I will say, bro, it, it feels good to have someone wanting to stand the fuck up against this shit. Because I always felt like I was talking to the wall sometimes. I always felt like, you know, just because I just have a podcast, nobody really gives a fuck what I'm saying. But here we have somebody who has a huge yeah. position in this industry. And I think this is what it's going to take, man. And you got a lot of people like myself and many other people who are down to fucking ride with you against this kind of neglect. Fuck this shit. It ain't going to happen no more. Yeah, I was actually just thinking maybe maybe we should add like a specific section on Morph Market for like facility photos. Badge, like a badge. Like, 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 like you get a badge that you have, yeah. a, you know, like a facility photo on your... And you maybe know, every, every, something like that. Every three months you update it. You, you get, get the, the yellow warning. warning. Warning emoji. Hey, they got mad at that one, buddy. They didn't like that, huh? You know, they, they did. So, uh, you know, funny story is um, I was originally designing that, coming up with how we were going to do it. And originally we were just going to add a red, you know, the red import or wild caught, uh, you know, text with the, you know, the white text with the red background that's on the listings themselves. 
and then the representative photo, uh, you know, right above it, we were going to do it right above the photo, right. Um, or right over the photo in the feed. So as you're scrolling through, you know, you're just seeing photos and they have it right there. You can't miss it. And I was like, Oh, that's going to take up too much room. So then I'm like, you know, maybe I'll ask, you know, the public and see what they say about, you know, this warning icon instead. So I was just going to put a little, really small, like yellow icon with a little exclamation point in it. And that was going to be in the corner. And then when you click it or hover over it, it pops up with, you know, whatever it is like representative photo, wild caught, you know, anything like that. Uh, What's funny though, is that everybody was so against it. So then I'm like, okay, I guess we'll go with the other route, which is funny enough is actually way worse because a little warning icon is not a big deal, but now it's this big ass red, you know, wild caught thing, you know, and it's like, <laughs> they asked for it. I'm right now, Darian, and I'm just saying this is going to switch. If you really make this a flex to be on Morph Market, like a badge showing that you're not scared to show your facility, I am so curious to see how many people do this, man. How many people are going to take advantage of that badge? The proof is in your room. Like, okay, yeah. you, you got a cool podcast or you got this, you got that. You talk a good game. How come you never show your animals? Dude, that's one way I got after my little fucking puny little fucking cancel group. Cause I'll, I called them out. I'll say, Hey, show fucking, yep. show, me, show me your collection, dude. You got a big mouth. Mind you, there was a couple guys who like, yeah, they, they respectful collections, but the majority fuck yep. bro. Freezer. Yeah. Show me your freezer. <laughs> <laughs> the most optimal way would be that once a year at, complete random it could be three months later it could be 12 months later whatever basically say hey you got an hour they just do a quick like live walkthrough and it doesn't get shown publicly it's more of like a private thing like morph market only you know and especially like, if you're being accused of it too right like because like like you know if there's if there's numerous, numerous yeah. cases of like my animal showed up dead or this this or that then yep. you're obviously at then that show place. us your stuff and show yeah. us that that's not a huge problem how have things been have things calmed down a little bit you would say or things turning a little bit no it's it's still crazy <laughs> I, I quit man i'm i'm fucking done I, I need to retire. I'm I'm going to retire like next year. I'm going to be like, you know, fuck this. I'm out. See you guys later. Good luck. I'll let Morph Market just do its thing. And yeah, you know, just God bless everyone. Uh, but it's a wrap for this episode. Thank you, Darian. Have a good night, man. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, like I said, man, Reptile Community Fridays is to kind of bring us all together, re- regardless where you see eye to eye with me or the guest or whoever. This is like a... This is a group thing. Like we come together, you know, appreciate everyone being active in the uh, chats and whatnot. All the super chats. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Drop a like too, guys. If you really thought that this episode was something that this industry needed or where you're at, drop that like button, uh, hit that subscribe button. This is your first time tapping in. Coolest reptile podcast in the world, right? Exactly. Uh, The most relevant podcast. I got to tell you that, man. Everything as far as reptile keeping, breeding, uh admiring exposing i don't like the exposing shit man but comes to certain shit like this something turns i don't i I have like something in me that just turns off where like bro this is what it is like we're talking (laughs) straight neglect and there's really no coming back from that i feel like so let's make sure this happens man you guys stick to your guns and to all the hypocrites out there be careful move smart hypocrites um all the ones who decide to be quiet all the ones who are just like no, I, if I was you, I would, I would fucking learn how to evolve. I would do some really deep soul searching. Anyone out there who's not happy with what they keep, listen to me. This is especially for you people. You need to fucking figure it out. Because at, at a time like this in this reptile industry, the way it, it's basically crumbling in a sense, not totally, but goddamn, people are losing their fucking minds. So you better be keeping what you love. Because if you don't keep what you love, these next two years, it's going to get harder and harder and harder. Mark my words. Shout out to all the proud reptile keepers, the ones who walk into their rooms with their head high, super excited to be around their animals, super excited to speak to other people about their animals. Basically, shout out to anyone who's all about the animals, the ones who fucking do their talking with the work with the animals. I just want to say shout to you guys. We need more of you guys. Be proud out there and get ready because tonight I'm starting the trend. All right. I'm calling Junior and a couple other people out and it's all about flexing your goddamn room. Let's flex your room. If you're really about this shit, you won't be scared to show off your room, right? So let's get this started. Let's get this thing popping. Happy Friday, guys. I appreciate everyone out there. Much love and respect. 
And uh, man, we're all in this together, man. This is all about the animals. Ain't nobody going to fuck with my animals. Nobody going to fuck with your animals. I would hope not. But let's stand by them because they need us. All about the animals. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. That way you're on top of every single vlog I drop here on this YouTube channel. If you're looking for exclusive content, please click the very first link you see in the description below. Join the Trap Talk Patreon family. As soon as you join the Patreon family, you get a link to the Discord, which will tap you in with over 165 trappers. I'll catch you guys here next week for another trap vlogs, and I'm out. Cheers!